My apologies, everyone. Uh, so the announcements uh, for today uh, come to the next Crafty Connections, a meeting on Wednesday, August the 31st. Uh, and the next community blood drive is Friday, September 9th from 9 to 3. Be sure to sign up online to ensure your spot. Although I don't think they'll turn anybody away if you forget to sign up. And the next Bring One Sunday is September 11th, which is a couple of weeks from now. And most importantly, thank, thanks to everyone who donated uh, <coughs> the school supplies for Hamilton School. And uh, please stay after worship and help us put the kits together. We won't quite have 500, something over 400, uh, but that's pretty good. And we'll be looking for some people to deliver the kits tomorrow, Monday, uh, from church. So see me in the other room if you're able to do that. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, oh yeah, uh, the, the, the uh, dis discussion about putting information that you would like to see the forum, uh, how the forum be handled either here at church at, on Sundays or some other day of the week in the evening by Zoom. So put that on the yellow card if you have strong feelings. So I believe that's all the announcements unless somebody has something that didn't get written down here. Luann? No? Okay. <laughs> Seeing no one, uh, please uh, ready your hearts for worship while the, pl <coughs> the prelude is occurring. Thank you. Uh -huh. rise if you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, 
the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the be in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. By the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift. We'll continue with the opening hymn, I Come With Joy. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
be with you. Let us pray. O God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the readings. A reading from Proverbs. Do not push yourselves forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be cold, told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves are being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he was, has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God. Word of God. Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor. In case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise <coughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now today, uh, I want to share with you a brief review of our vacation that Sally and I took. 
Now, before you groan too much about having to look at an endless slideshow with narration, I promise I'll only provide with a few photos, and they, they do relate to today's scripture. The place we visited is the final destination of Christian pilgrimages that are made by the thousands each year. Santiago de Compostela. Pilgrims travel by various means, including walking to the cathedral at this place to attend a mass commemorating their pilgrimage. Now here's a map with the destination shown in the far northwest corner of Spain. The main pilgrimage route to Santiago follows an earlier Roman trade route, which continues to the Atlantic coast of Spain's Galicia province, ending at Cape Finisterre which is Latin for the end of the world, because if you stand at that place and look outside, all you see is ocean. So of course it's the end of the world. Sally and I were not able to complete an official pilgrimage since we arrived by bus from our ship and then walked only the final 500 yards to the city and the cathedral. To complete an official pilgrimage, one must walk a minimum of 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles, or use a bicycle. If, if you use a bicycle, you have to complete 200 kilometers. But why a Christian pilgrimage in this place, Spain, so far from Jerusalem in the Holy Land? Well, the simple answer is that the remains of the Apostle James are located here, created and established after the discovery of the relics of St. James at the beginning of the ninth century. The Way of St. James became a major pilgrimage route for medieval Christianity from the 10th century onwards. Pope Alexander in 1500 officially declared the Camino de Santiago to be one of the three great pilgrimages of Christendom, along with those who are bound for Jerusalem or Rome. Other world issues during the years since it was inaugurated have led to rises and falls in participation. But it's been recently, in the 1990s, I guess that's still recently, even though it's 30 years ago, uh, that the pilgrimage to Santiago regained the popularity it had in the Middle Ages. In fact, our Bishop Chris is looking forward to a time when he can complete such a pilgrimage. Next photo, please. Here is a picture of the inside of the cathedral that the people uh, we'll go to to attend. You can't tell because it's a little bit of a dark slide, but there is some a mammoth organ uh, in that cathedral. <clears throat> but uh, so now you ask, is this location how is this location related to today's message? Well, the relationship has to do with James, one of Christ's apostles. And every year on July 25th, the church commemorates the apostle James and using the same scripture readings each year. The gospel text for July 25th is from Mark chapter 10, and some of which states, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, Well, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. In other words, the apostles James and John were making a presumptuous request of Jesus because they felt they were favored by him and doubtless were perfectly sincere in professing their willingness to follow the master to any suffering that he might endure. To the disciples, these metaphors may have conveyed the thought of a messianic <coughs> battle and they professed themselves willing to fight in it. As for the rewards for which they asked, these were not Jesus to bestow. Jesus said, these are prepared by God. And wanting to be like Gentile rulers, they understood leadership in terms of commanding slaves and exacting service from them. But Jesus knows that's not the way in the kingdom of God. The person who wants to be first must take the lowest place and serve his fellows. And this is not a recipe for success in this life, it is a command to find happiness and service instead of being served. In loving others instead of com commanding them. It finds its inspiration in the example of Jesus himself. 
So it's not a recipe for success in this life. It's a command to find happiness in service instead of being served, in loving others instead of commanding them. It finds its inspiration in the example of Jesus himself. And as for James, well, if you're not aware, he was the first of the, apostle, the apostles to give his life. Acts 11 describes how he was <clears throat> beheaded by Herod in Jerusalem. And this is another of the readings for that July 25th commemoration date that's held every year. So again, how does it fit in with today's gospel? Today's gospel from Luke, we see a similar situation. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. So how do we apply that to our lives today? Well, <clears throat> Jesus is eating a Sabbath meal at the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees, and the other guests are watching him closely. They see him heal a sick man and send him away. That's described in the verses that were not read today in, in the Gospel. Then to discover that Jesus is also watching them closely, he calls their attention to their own efforts to seek honor for themselves and for each other. As the guests claim the seats of distinction and the host invites only those who have the means to reciprocate. <laughs> this phenomenon can still be seen today when we want others to see us in the reserved first class, private box, members only, elite club seats, with people of influence in this world. It is to us seeking to exalt ourselves in this way that Jesus addresses us. Our behavior betrays the fact that we, are, that we make gods of ourselves and out of those who can enhance our reputation or further our ambitions. We don't consider those who have nothing to give us worthy of our attention. We value the praise and the company of those who have power in this world because we think they can give us a share in their power and influence. But we are not gods. The honor that we can give and take from each other belongs to the empire of this world, not to God's empire. Ultimately, the real God is the real host of this meal of life, and we're all guests together. Jesus is in the role of divine host when he welcomes and heals a sick man. He warns us that God will come to us who have exalted ourselves into the places of honor and say to you, give this person your seat. In the very telling of his parable, Jesus strips us of our honor and clothes us with shame of our self-seeking assessments of who has dignity at God's meal and who does not. God honors those who can only receive and not repay, whose company is no boost to our power, our reputation, and our influence. In God's empire, the first becomes last, and the last becomes first. God gathers up those in the lowest places by taking the lowest place himself, stripping divine honor and all things away and becoming a naked human baby from a poor family. Grown up, this human Jesus, hated by those whose idolatry he exposes, was stripped again of clothing, honor, and all dignities when he was crucified. In the tomb, Jesus joined the disgraced at the bottom end of the table, those who are sent there either by others or by God. From there, God raised him to the very head of the table to be invested once again with the honor of the Son of God as host. God gives us everything, God gives up everything to befriend human beings and to invite them to come up higher. There is room at the table even for those who have been previously humbled. The one who was killed is made alive. In God's empire, the first become last and the last first. 
And we can look and trust this God who has honored us humans by becoming one of us and who feeds us with his own life. And the page won't turn. He feeds us with his own life through bread and wine. Jesus has given us his very spirit so we know that God will give us everything that we need no matter how impossible or undeserved. We do not need to seek honor from others to expect them to sustain us in return for our recognition of them. They are not God and we are not God. Thanks be to God. Knowing <clears throat> that we have everything flowing from God to us, we are free to turn our attention and generosity to those who can give us nothing equivalent in return. When we do that, we find that by inviting the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind to share our lives and our abundance, that God gives us so much more than the equivalent in return. We find ourselves among the people <clears throat> whom God has invited to the feast and wishes to honor. We are raised with those last ones into the empire of God in the resurrection of the righteous one, Jesus, who makes us righteous with him. <clears throat> and so these thoughts tie to what Jesus said in the Markin text that's used for the commemoration day of James. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to become first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So now that we know what we're asking for, the request changes. Ask not what Jesus can do for you. Ask what you can do for Jesus. This is not just a change in leadership, but a systemic change in the politics of life. It's a whole new kingdom where the position of honor is at the end of the line. A word where we're not in it for what we can get, or what, <clears throat> but we're in it to see what we can give. The power to receive is the power to serve as Jesus served us. And by giving whatever he asks, even our lives, for the sake of the gospel. And so as James gave his, gave his life, we are also asked to give up our lives as we know them. Let us pray. Jesus, teach us to forsake our ways, to humble ourselves, to kneel at your feet, and live out your way of compassion. Amen. We will now continue with the hymn of the day.
continue now with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Let us pray. As the generations rise and fall before you, Heavenly Father, you provide persons of faith to continue your holy work on earth. We ask to be included among the faithful, that in our time others will come to know your name and serve you above all else. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give us a vision of the future, Holy Spirit, that we may sing like the psalmist in confidence of a bright future with you in the world to come. Hear us, O God. The mercy is great. Holy Spirit, let us live by your spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control above all other goals. Hear us, O God. The mercy is great. Lord Jesus Christ, give us the will to be your faithful servants and the help of the Holy Spirit for courage on the journey. Hear us, O oh God. Lord Jesus, resolute to go to Jerusalem to complete, complete the task required for our redemption, receive our praise for your willingness to suffer and die for us. You alone make us fit for the kingdom of God. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, give us the willpower to say no to those habits of the day that disrupt the joy of being with you. Hear us, Lord Jesus, as we name those in need of your close company, both as listed within our weekly celebration newsletter, as well as those newly named before you now. Martha Johnson, Mary Press, Robin Connolly, Connie Leach, the Leach family, Gladys Seeger, Matt Hefner, Esther Van Wicklin, Jacob Kennedy, Karen Smith, Ken Ross, Jerry, K. Neff, Carol Newsland, Noonan, Margaret Graisley, Sandy Albert, Leo Albert, Ruth Kosterhaus, Michael Grant, Myla Moody, Nisha Ganish, Keith Kingsbury, Jody Galbraith, Jim Beerbaum. Hear us, O oh God. Be with those who have special needs, known only to you, that they may hear your guiding voice. Today we lift up all victims of worldly conflict, especially the Ukrainian people, Christians persecuted around the world, and those affected by gun violence. We pray for those who have hold political office, those serving our country, including Ian Bremick, Robert Shambo, Rachel Flores, Owen Green, Calvin Heim, Devin Kearney, Tyler Miller, Trevor Danielson, and Ryan Lloyd. The people in our companion synods, the Mbulu Diocese in Tanzania, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, and the Southeastern Pennsylvania Synod. Our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Donald Cress and their staffs, the Celebration Lutheran Church Council and staff, and our pastor, the Reverend James Fogel. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Open our hearts always, so that we may always experience and rejoice in your grace. Today, we especially give thanksgiving for our members, Matt, Adrian, Reagan, and Nolan Dent, Brian and Sandy Doyle, Greg and Diane Androsti, Bill and Patty Irwin, the birthdays of Christopher Kreil, Diane Androsti, Marge Ross, Charlene Williams, and the anniversary of Emily and Jeff Yandura. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
turn the weeping of those who mourn, the deaths of those whom they love, into the joyful expectation of eternal life for all who belong to you. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, Hear us now as we together pray for this community of faith. Gracious God, we have made Peace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. offering.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the greening earth given for all, for the talents we are given to share, and for this bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be The table is ready, come and eat, and please sit down.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing hymn 531. serve all people. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.